I want to talk to you about labeling in ggplot. One thing we found through our consulting work is that while it's really tempting to try to label everything on your plots, it actually ends up being more confusing. Let me show you an example. What you're looking at here is a chart that shows population projections from 2020 to 2040. This was part of a report that we did, in this case for Hartford, Connecticut, although we actually did it for every single town in the state of Connecticut. Now, as you can see, we have labels on this just for Hartford, not for Hartford County and not for Connecticut. Now, the version that has labels just for Hartford is nice and clean and easy to understand. But if you have labels for Hartford, Hartford County, and Connecticut, you can see how messy it is and how hard it is to understand. In this video, I'm going to show you how to smartly label your graphs so that they're really easy to understand for your readers. The first thing that you need to do is you need to really think about what it is that you want your reader to get from the graph. In our case, what mattered most was highlighting the particular town that this report was for. In this case, it's Hartford. We wanted people to be able to compare Hartford to Hartford County and to Connecticut, but we didn't need to show Hartford County and Connecticut. The values for those places would just be kind of distracting. Really what mattered most was showing Hartford. So what does it look like to do this in code? Let me dive into our studio and show you how we did it. Okay, starting out, I'm going to load the tidyverse. Then I'm going to bring in my data, calling it population projection. If I take a look at it, if I run it just for Hartford, you can see what it looks like. We've got location, in this case it's just Hartford, year, age group, PCT for percent, and then percent formatted, which we'll use as the text label. The next thing I did was I made a function to create a population projection plot. I'm going to walk through it at a high level because really the most important thing is not this actual function, but adding the text. So our population projection plot has two arguments, town to plot and county to plot. These two arguments then get used, you can see here on line 12, where we filter that population projection data to only keep whatever town we want to plot and whatever county we want to plot, and then of course Connecticut. Then we convert location into a factor, setting the levels as Connecticut, then county to plot and town to plot. That just helps ensure that the line for the town, in our case Hartford, will show up on top of the other two. Okay, so moving into ggplot, you can see here on lines 18 through 23, I'm setting the aesthetic properties that I'm going to use. Then I'm using geompoint to put one point in 2020 and one in 2040. Next on line 27, I'm adding a line to connect the county and the state. I'm removing the legend title, which would show up by default for color. And then I'm making a faceted chart because in our chart, we actually have one chart for each age group. Next, we're going to set the Y limits to go from 0 to 40% because I know that that's going to encompass everything. We're then on line 39 going to use the percent format function, which will make it so that instead of showing up as, for example, 0 0.4, we'll get 40%. Next, we'll set the colors for town, county, and state. We'll reverse the legend order to put the town first in our legend. And then finally, we'll make some tweaks to our theme. So I'm going to run this function, and then I'm going to actually use it. So you can see here on lines 74 through 77, I've got population projection plot where the town that I want to plot is Hartford and the county is Hartford County. If I run that, you can see that I get a nice plot. I don't have any text. So now let me add that text. So you can see here on lines 84 through 89 how I'm using GM text to add labels. So I'm saying AES label equals PCT formatted. Again, that was a variable that just shows, you know, 7% instead of 0.7. So let me run this and you can see there we get that really messy graph where we have all of our text on top of all of our lines. It's really hard to read. Now, one solution that I've seen people use is to use ggrepel. ggrepel is a great package that allows you to ensure that your text labels don't overlap, and it does this automatically for you. So to use this, I would run population projection plot, and then instead of using gm text, I just use gm text repel. So I'm going to run this, and you can see now we've got our text labels separated. That looks better, but it's still pretty messy, right? That's a lot of text labels. Again, as a reminder, the most important thing here is to think, well, what is it that we really want to highlight? 
And again, what we want to highlight is the town, in this case, Hartford. To highlight Hartford, I'm going to scroll down here and show you what I've done. So I've got my population projection plot, and then I've got my GM text. But instead of showing all of the labels for you know, Hartford, Hartford County, and Connecticut, I'm filtering it. So you can see on line 111 where I'm saying data equals population projection, but then I'm filtering where location equals Hartford. Now watch what happens. Let me run this. Let me actually just move this over slightly. You can see now we're only getting Hartford labels. So we're only getting those red labels, which is great. Let me just move it a little bit more so it looks even better. There we go. Now you can see on line 112 where I've done nudge y equals 0 0.03. That just puts the text labels above the line and the points, which is what we want. Just to sum up, the first step here is to think what is it that I want to highlight with my text labels. Adding all text labels is just too much. Instead, what I wanted to highlight here was Hartford, the town that we really care about for this particular report. So to use just Hartford data, I took my original population projection data and then I filtered it within GM text in order to just show labels for Hartford. And in this way, we can smartly label our plots made in ggplot to help our readers take away from them what we really want them to get.